Housing is now in a bear market, which is signified by a 20% decline. But it might not be what you think. While home sales are down 20%, home prices are still up nearly 13.6% year over year. But that's likely to change. At the time I'm making this video, interest rates are reaching new recent highs above 7.15%, which is likely going to cause further damage to the housing market at a time when the Fed is expected to continue raising the Fed funds rate. As you can see from this chart here, the probability of them raising the Fed funds rate by three quarters of a percent at the next meeting on November 2nd is nearly 100%. And on top of that, they have one additional meeting in December, on December 14th. And at the time I'm filming this video, there's a 77% probability that they're going to hike it another three quarters of a percent, which is exactly why we're seeing the housing market stall. It has a lot to do with affordability. As you've seen in other videos that I've posted, housing affordability is at its worst level in nearly 35 years. So what's the solution for more affordable housing? Is it lower house prices or is it lower interest rates? I recently did a survey on my channel asking this question to my viewers out there and I was actually quite surprised by the answer because a lot of people out there actually have it wrong, which is exactly what I'm gonna go over here in just a minute. With interest rates now hitting the highest level in 20 years, we have mortgage applications hitting a 25 year low. And that's because there's less home buyers out there actually able to purchase homes with interest rates reaching these new highs. And this is exactly why you're seeing the housing market stall. This is exactly why you're seeing homes sit on the market longer. This is exactly why you're seeing sellers have to drop their asking prices just because there's less people out there actually looking for homes. But let's go back to the question I posed a moment ago, and that's what's the solution for more affordable housing? Is it lower house prices or is it lower interest rates? The reality is it's both. If we could have lower house prices and lower rates, that would help affordability. But as you can see from this survey here, two thirds of the people out there think lower house prices is actually the solution for more affordable housing. And that's wrong. And I'm gonna show you why here in this example right now. So let's say you bought a $500,000 home a year ago when interest rates were at 3%. And let's say you were able to put 20% down on that home so you were financing $400,000. Well, the mortgage payment on that home back then was $1,686. That same mortgage payment today at 7% is $2,661. And if you heard me earlier, interest rates are now above 7%, so that payment's actually higher. It's over $1,000 higher in just a couple of months because of how much interest rates have gone up. But let's say you wanted house prices to drop to make that payment more affordable. Let's say you say, well, I'm not buying a house at these rates until home prices go back down. Well, do you realize home prices would have to drop over 35% with interest rates at 7% to make that payment even close to where it was when people bought their homes a year ago? Because that same payment today on a $325,000 home putting 20% down, financing $260,000 is actually more than the payment at a 3% rate and the home price at $500,000. That payment at 7% would be $1,729. I mean, that alone shows you how much impact interest rates have over house prices. Now, if you had a choice, do you want a lower house price or a lower interest rate? Ideally, you want the lower house price. But what I can tell you of nearly 20 years of experience in this business is most people live off the monthly payment, not the price. Most people have no intentions of ever paying off their home. That's why when they get a home, they get some equity in it, they end up refinancing and taking that cash out, maybe doing some improvements, maybe going to buy another property, maybe going on a vacation, whatever the reason is. They continue to add on debt. Very few people actually have the goal of paying off their home. And even those that have that goal don't end up doing it. It was a lot more achievable for our grandparents because they were buying less expensive properties. But today, with home prices reaching new median prices, it's more and more difficult to pay off your home. So most people worry about the monthly payment. And as you can see from the example I gave you a moment ago, home prices would need to drop substantially to make that payment more affordable, which honestly, isn't likely to happen. While we are likely to continue to see declines in home prices in a lot of markets out there, 
partly due to seasonality, mostly due to rising interest rates and homes just sitting on the market, buyers not being able to purchase these homes, it's not likely that home prices are going to decline significantly enough to make that payment more affordable for the majority of people out there, like we discussed, unless interest rates come down. So for everyone out there expecting interest rates to continue rising, that's just going to make housing less and less affordable. Now, a lot of people out there believe that, you know, with rising rates, with declining home prices, you're going to have a lot of sellers put their homes on the market, and that's going to cause, you know, a shift in prices even further down. Well, as you can see from this clip here, 85% of homeowners have an interest rate lower than today's rate, which means if they were to sell their property and try to buy something else, maybe less expensive, then they would end up paying more money for that house because house prices are likely higher than where they purchased their home, even with the declines that we've seen and interest rates are higher than what they currently have on their mortgage, which is why I think you'll see a lot of sellers stay in their homes, which is likely to keep supply low, like we've seen over the last couple of years. In fact, over the last couple of weeks, we've actually seen new listings coming to the market also decline. Again, partly due to seasonality and partly due to sellers looking at the market going, if I sell this, what am I going to buy? How can I afford it? It's likely going to be more expensive. If I were to sell, I either have to buy something else again and or rent. And as you can see here, even though rents have come back from their highs of 18% increase year over year, they're still up 9% from last year. So in a lot of cities out there, it still makes sense to own a home versus renting. Now, the only way for me to accomplish my goal of helping more buyers and sellers is by your help. If you found any value in this video so far, do me a favor, hit that like button. It costs no money and only takes a few seconds of your time. By doing this, it will help more people see the video and in turn, you'll be helping more buyers get educated on this crazy housing market. So what does the future of housing look like over the next couple of months? It's going to be slow out there. If you're a home buyer, there's going to be less competition. You're going to have your pickings of the market out there for a lot of markets. Now, in the market I'm in, there are still home buyers out there looking for property, believe it or not. In fact, I've written a couple of offers over the last week. I have some clients coming in from Canada looking at a second home, and we're talking prices at a million bucks. So there are still home buyers out there. But what I can tell you is that there are less of them. There's way less competition. And these buyers are looking for properties that are nicely done, that are priced fairly. They're not looking at the ugly houses, the houses that need a lot of work, and they're not willing to consider overpriced houses at all. So over the next couple of months, you're likely to see these overpriced houses continue to sit, or you're likely to see the sellers further adjust their prices downwards if they really want to sell those homes. I expect the next six months in this business to be very, very slow, which means a lot of agents are going to drop out of the business. A lot of mortgage people are likely not going to be here and it's going to continue to be a tough market. As I've mentioned before, if interest rates continue to go up, house prices will continue to go down. But I do believe as we get closer to a recession, as inflation numbers start to come down, you're going to have less volatility in the market and interest rates could come back helping out with that affordability. So if you're in the market right now, you should be cheering for lower rates versus lower house prices based on that example I mentioned earlier. And at the end of the day, if you could get a little bit of both, which is what you're likely to see, you're likely to see home prices pull back in a lot of markets, continue to pull back because of the things that we've talked about today. You're likely to see interest rates also pull back, maybe not in the short term, but over the next six months or so, which should make housing more affordable. But I'd love to know your thoughts. So do me a favor and leave them in the comments below. So in summary, the housing market is going to continue to stall over the next couple of months because of interest rates and their effect on affordability.